passion, but I'm not doing that. I'm not fucking interlocking toes, bro. That's called passion. <laughs> no, that's called disgusting. I don't give a fuck how much you love you are. That's nasty. Love has boundaries, man. Like, just because you love somebody, I mean, you got to do like all types of shit. Well, yeah, love. I love you, bitch. Let me lick the bottom of your feet. Like, what? Well, love and lust is two different things. Love. It's not about licking somebody's feet. None of that. I think the lust is you're overexcited about somebody. So that's when you do extraordinary things. Still not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I can love you and do a bunch of extraordinary things for you. There's still some shit I'm not going to do for you. Because as a person, it makes me uncomfortable. I'm I've been cool in those situations, that. though, where you act real different with that person. Like, oh, my God, she's fire. She gets Everything. Mm. I now normally I don't do this, and they don't believe you when you say that, so you can't tell them. <laughs> I that. don't believe nobody when yeah, they say that shit. But <laughs> don't just don't say that just shit. Don't That's say a turn it. off. Yeah, you know I never do this, right? All right, bitch. You know what? Why you have to say that? Why? Don't ever say it. Cause I'm wrong, never going to believe, believe you. you. I don't believe. And I know that there's some people who didn't believe me. But that's just not something that you just say. But even though I know that, you know what I mean, it comes from a good place, I will never believe you if you ever told me you've never done something. Right. It's not Especially happening. Especially if you're a grown-ass woman. Like, I'm trying to hear that shit, And man. it could be something simple, right. too. Right. Something simple. Stop like, playing me. Oh, you ain't never blast nobody off in the car? So I'm the first you, guy that you topping off first, in the car? First of all, I'm not that great of a guy. All right? So... Cause then, yeah, <laughs> now you, you question yourself. Right, like, first, why, you, why are you going? You this your first time doing it with me? I just asked you one time to do it. You said yeah. I'm to believe that I ain't never cook nah. a man dinner on a Sunday night. Why? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? You want to come over and eat? <laughs> like now, normally I don't do this, but I'm gonna invite you over to my crib, and man. I just met you yesterday. Certain catchphrases is just it's not progressive. But I will saying? say it's that it's really happen. based on events in life where we where there's things that happen to us. Where we just throw the rules out the book. We just throw the rules out. I'm not following those rules that I live by because there's relationships and there's hurt. And once you're out those situations, for example, I know like if I was to get in contact or start dealing with a woman who's newly divorced, I don't think she's living by any rules. Yeah, you y'all be living your best life. Right. So she was th- just locked up for a couple right. of years. How long she was divorced? I ain't doing that, girl. I'm single. I'm about to go. Mm-hmm. They don't live by most of them. Don't live by rules no more. And I'm gonna give y'all some tips, fellas. If you're not looking, the niggas for, do the same shit though. We do. Man, I'm single. Man, fuck that bitch. I don't care. I'm going to. I'm going over here with Craig and them. Yeah, but we don't have as many rules as women, though, right? Some niggas do. I mean, that's I don't a fact. Know. We got to speak for the some niggas too, because that because yeah. it'd be hard to speak for everybody. I never, I, I never tried to speak for everybody. Fuck that. <laughs> I speak for myself, and I throw out possible scenarios that other niggas might, you know, fall victim to. But, but we are a podcast for the brotherhood, so we want to speak for the brothers. But once again, it's hard yeah, when we're not on one accord. Well, listen, we ain't on one accord right now because I don't speak for you or the rest of these niggas. But just like I was saying. Fellas, if you're not interested in a relationship and you just want, you know what I mean, somebody to hang out with, try to aim for the newly divorced and they don't and or divorce in like maybe a year or two. I'll give them that bit of a stretch because they don't want to be bothered. They don't want to be tied down. They're not thinking of marriage. They want to live their best life and they don't want you to interrupt their peace as well. So they're going- the Niggas get clinky too. Damn, she run around having that good- Divorce pussy And they calling me back <laughs> <laughs> That be the crazy right. thing Because it don't matter What gender you are The aggressor Normally is the one That gets stopped So so if the shorty is like Yeah I just want some dick And I'm good The men be acting dumb All of a sudden mm-hmm. It's like damn You just going I gotta leave Where You kicking me out Yeah <laughs> Yeah it's over <laughs> you, you thought I was bullshitting When I told you That's all I wanted Yeah I think it's all In presentation though Like You can kick me out but I'm cool. Like, nigga like me, I would, if my girl was to do some shit like that, I'd be cool with the straight up approach. I appreciate straight up blunt just being told. Would you be what okay with being called upon only when she wants some? No other type of communication? Fuck yeah. Really? <laughs> if I was if I wasn't in a relationship and I was just out here single doing of my course, own thing. Of course, of course, of course. If you're you're if single. I was single doing my own thing and then sure he was just like, yo, come through. Well, yeah, I'll pull up. Listen, I'll leave when she said leave too. I probably be getting dressed before that. <laughs> but I know the I know I know my position. I know what's happening. I know my role. <laughs> nah, nah, I know what's happening. I wouldn't even be I wouldn't even be tripping. But hold on though. Who the fuck you supposed to be? You lit right now. I see you you were working on your uh your image. 
No, actually, um, these glasses, these shades just happened to be in the bag, so I just put them on. I actually didn't come, like, I didn't actually pack them myself. So I, I was prepared to have, first off, an image. I got on a hoodie. I got on a sweatsuit. I've been wearing sweatpants since. But you got on shades and a scully, like, like you're going for a look. I actually was looking in the camera, like, I hope I don't look ridiculous. So I, I wasn't going for a look. As long as you're confident about it, you won't look ridiculous. Absolutely. And I got a gym for y'all. We're going to say that for later. But we actually got to start this podcast. And with that being said... Hey, hey, hey. We're brothers. Bitch, what we do? We're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Hey. Give me a high five. All right, cut and print. Beautiful, guys. Dying on mic. That was... Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Fresco. You dig what I'm saying? You can follow your boy on Instagram at Fresco Fame and on Twitter at Fresco Famous. You understand your boy? And this is Flaw 700. You can follow me on Twitter at Flaw 700 and on Instagram at Jarrell Minor. And we are the Podcast Brothers, and this is episode 165. 175. Yeah. 175. In downtown Trenton in the lovely Starbucks. Uh, the weather's not bad today, man. The weather's not no, it's bad not. today. It's not that cold. It's not raining. Everything is good. I know we had about uh, 10 minutes of just random conversation. Um, but how are you, my good brother? You asked me how my week was? Yeah, that's what that meant. I'm good. Um, pretty pretty busy week. Um, getting into the swing of working this airport job. Literally just got off work right before I came here. Um, I like it, man. You know, I actually, it's not too many jobs I work where I actually enjoyed going to work. This job, I actually do enjoy going to work because I learn a lot. I talk to a lot of people. I'm um, rubbing elbows and having conversations with people in higher positions to figure out, you know, the loopholes and, you know, just how to get a leg up in a situation. Um, I speak to flight. Uh, I speak to pilots. I talk to co-pilots, flight attendants, airplane mechanics, private plane. Is this um, the first job you've had that you see growth? Like you just mentioned so many other different titles. Do, do you see yourself moving yeah, up? Yeah. So just like the first job, you'd be like, yo. I'm going to be... Well, air, I, <clears throat> I like it because airplane jobs, airport jobs aren't um, only happening in that one location. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like it's literally all around the world. And it, it opens up opportunities in those other places too if you do what you do, what, what you're supposed to do in this space. So if I perform well at this position, there could be an uh, opportunity for a management position in San Diego or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And I got the option to take my ass out west and live a different life, doing something that I enjoy doing. Um, I do want to take it a different route. I haven't decided yet, though, but I'm just kind of doing my research in regards to what, what um, I try to refrain from saying. Um, I'm trying to figure out what next route I want to take as far as career path with the airport. I definitely wanted to be in the airport, but um, just haven't decided as of yet. I'm actually leaning towards going to pilot school, so I'm to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a pilot the other day, and he laid some game on me, and it kind of, that conversation with him has been on my mind ever since. And, you know, just doing my own due diligence and checking it out, the information that he gave me, and just, you know, plugging the dots, Filling in the blanks to see how that applies to me and if I can make it work. And so far, what I learned is very, very doable, and they make it easy for you to do it. So that's um that's that's where I'm going. I think I'm gonna take my talents to flight school sometime in um 2020. But um, other than that, uh, my son had a birthday party last week at his school. Early celebration. My kid is turning three this Friday. So I was on my watch dad wave, went up to the school, passing out cupcakes and juice. Yo, kids are hilarious, yo. I'm sitting there, now, you know, I don't know none of these kids like that. Mm. But I'm sitting there, and the one kid was just like, he walks up to me, hey, you're Jason's dad. <laughs> like, it wasn't a question, it was a statement. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. And the whole time, he sat right next to me. And every so often, he kept calling me, hey, Jason's dad. Hey, Jason's dad. Hey, Jason's dad. <laughs> And I eventually had to ask the teacher. I said, excuse me, what, what, what is this young man's name so I can answer him? I don't want to be rude. I didn't want to talk to him, to be honest with you, but I wasn't going to keep ignoring the kid. 
So I, I talked to, it was, But it was just like The silly kid shit My son does He called me Da 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 And then I see him And he do like a, a Half spin and a split Or some shit And I'm supposed to laugh Yay Not to cut you off But I, my son he five And he was like Dad look He does this dance I'm like fam You're not doing nothing <laughs> Stop calling me For that simple shit Yo, man Can I we say that to him But <laughs> That's like, what you wanted to say fam, I be wanting to tell my son my All the name, time man. I'm like hey, uh, yeah, You know I don't give a fuck About that right <laughs> like, like, What are you doing <laughs> You're wasting my you time You're calling kid. me Like you about to hit A backflip just, standing in one spot Just do the move for yourself yeah. Right Cause you're the only one That gives a fuck About that move <laughs> You're the only one I promise you But um <laughs> So that's what the kid was doing the whole time. He just did some silly kid shit, and I was supposed to go. I, I ain't even. I ain't even giving the pleasure. I, I just looked at him and kept doing what I was doing. Um, so yeah, that was about it. Um, got some more good news. Um, me and my lady, we got approved for a new spot. You understand? Moving, moving next month. This is a lot happening, man. I feel a lot of great. Um, a great, a lot of great vibes from the universe in regards to what the future holds and the potential and the plateau of that potential. You know and I'm saying, and what could be accomplished. Just gotta stick to the grind, man. And uh, you know, what I'm saying, put your nose in the dirt and get to work. So, and that's 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 the kind of time I'm on right now. That was my week. Yeah. So, how's my week? You ask. Let me tell you about it. Okay. <laughs> Man, it was kind of, it was, man, this week is crazy. Up and down for a parent, I'd say. Uh, I got to see my oldest son perform. He's an inspiring actor. He did an amazing job, you know, and he's he's a natural. You know what I'm saying? Like, he did his thing. I can't remember what the play was called, but they were acting out um, immigrants coming over to the United States and all of the trials and tribulations that they had to go through to mm-hmm. change like I, I don't think we understand that like they actually what was that like ellis island or what immigrants it was it was any any immigrant you can name like it was a bunch of kids representing all of you, any immigrant you could think of that has migrated over to the united states right. um he did an excellent job i got to see the range of his acting he's going places i'm proud of him um, you know when he stands up there and says, "Cream it. corn, yep, <laughs> I'm running things, I'm, I'm running, running things." Cream corn. He got the um, you know, so when he goes up there and says, "You know, his name is such and such minor," you know, those are proud moments. The next day, I got to watch my daughter cheerlead at her high school, and she wanted to be a cheerleader for so long. She finally got to do it. But of course, when you go there, she hides behind everybody because she's shy. Oh I get it. God. But it's just like your fam. Nah, man. You, know, you would have yeah. been fine if I wasn't here. Don't be trying to hide. Yeah, she's hiding, but she had a good time. And I've been yeah. mad. So I'm blessed as a father to be able to make these events. You know, lucky for me, I wasn't booked. I didn't have to work. I didn't have things scheduled. I was able to go over there and support family. Um, that's highly important. Um, and not to knock what everybody else got going you on. You ain't never come to my basketball games, man. I, was, I mean, you know. <laughs> in hindsight, <laughs> in hindsight, I can look back at everything and be like, man, there's a lot of things I could have done better. I want to get out of that because hindsight is very painful sometimes. Yeah. All you do is look back. You look back and you say, fuck. Because... <laughs> Of what you know now Right So uh, just looking back You're always going to be like Man I should have did that And that is That could kind of lead to like Forms of depression Not saying that I'm going through that But once again This is a podcast And we like to talk about Mental health and things like that So I would say man leave, Leave the past where it's at Unless it's even good moments to trigger you because you're not if you're not living you're not that, there no more. If yeah. you're not getting that no more, you'd be like, Man, I want that again. And that then, should be happening to me sometimes. Shit. When I used to travel more than what I do now, I'd be thinking back on or oh, I get a fucking Facebook memory like you were here six years ago. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> God me, damn it. For me, going back in time is sometimes you might hit up an old thing. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to really understand that it's not that no more. It's just not. Even if they was on the same page as you, like, waiting for you to re- hit them up, mm-hmm. it's not going to be what it was okay. when it was. So who did you just smash that you used to smash that it wasn't as good no more? No, I didn't, but I'm pretty sure that that's the reality, <laughs> right? Because you're fishing for the yeah. highest moments. Right. They ain't coming. So I got to see my daughter uh, cheerlead. Now, the the roller coaster about everything is um, today is the day of the birth and passing of Jeremiah, my son. 
Bro, I thought you was about to say Jesus Christ. I was about to say, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Hey, hey. <laughs> I was about to say, yo, hey. yo. This show is the fuck nah, over. I'm not gonna... <laughs> nah. Go ahead. So, man. you know, sometimes you just get into your bag. For me, I'm learning a lot about myself to where it's hard to get in touch with your emotion. And once again, that's probably one of the issues that me and you had before where we had mm-hmm. situations. I think you were in touch with your emotions. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I keep it pushing and there's, it's starting to, I'm starting to understand, I'm starting to understand that bad, it don't register with me. It's kind of like you're a cyborg and you'd be like, yo, something bad happened. Mm-hmm. And you go, well, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? I robot ass nigga. You're like, you're honestly, you're like, yo, what am I supposed to do? Am I, am I supposed, I'm actually asking myself, do you cry at this moment? Mm-hmm. Do you become sad at this moment? Or do you remain strong at this moment? And you know, you just keep on going. So, like, the issue that I'm having is being that the father that I am and taking, and I, I have four children, you know, on this planet Earth. And the fact that I take care of all of them when his name is brought up or certain situations happen or times like this, I get to looking for him. Does that make sense? Because I'm used to having my kids. Why am I not able to take care of you? Why am I not able to provide for you? And it it gets me that way because that's all I know how to do. Mm-hmm. That's all I know how to do is provide for my children. And the fact that I can't provide for him, it just bothers me a bit. So I was, I don't like, last week, last year, this day fell on a Saturday. So I was able to just sit up and do whatever I did last year. But now we got a pod and I'm up for the challenge. But after this, man, I just might hit the gym. The way I deal with my Emotions is I just keep it moving. So after this, I'm going to hit the gym. Um, after that, I don't know what I'm going to do. But that's just how I deal with things. I keep moving. And now, I, don't think, I don't think that's dealing with it, though. I just not. think you just, you, just, you just ignore it and you just go on to the next thing. Which is why things and everything bothers me when it happens because I never... I think it's important to address stuff. I, I address stuff because until I address it or figure out a way in which to do so, it's always going to bother me. I, I can't get around stuff that I can't. If I got a problem with you, you did something to me that I ain't like before we recorded, I would have to talk to you about it before we recorded because my whole energy would have been different. You know, everything, like, I'd, you would ask me a question. I'm like, yeah. What the fuck wrong with you? I'm like, man, you know, I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, like, that's definitely. That's just, that's just not me. So, like, if, if the relationship ain't right, then I can't do the work or what it is because that should be looming over my head. So, And I normally work in those conditions. Like, if I, don't got, if I got a problem with somebody, I keep it to myself because I, I don't know why. And I even tweeted this last week. I said that I'm going to start asking questions and being more, you know, um, aggressive with things that go wrong. Um, and I've done it twice and it didn't end well. Uh, in his week And I sat down And said to myself This is why I don't talk to people This is why I don't get I, people- I know exactly what you mean It's like you know, I know exactly All what I'm you doing mean. You want somebody at- to hear you out When you express something That someone did to you That made you feel some type of way And you tell them You don't always want to hear Well if it wasn't for da, 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 It's always Yo I understand where you coming from And I apologize If I did something That made you feel that way But that wasn't my intent What my intent was The da 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 I ain't mean to make you feel da 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 But that shit don't happen you happen. get a defensive reaction prior. You get a defensive reaction first, and then like an hour later or the next day, a motherfucker come to you and be like, "You know what? Yesterday I thought about what you said, and I was, and you it's was too right, late. motherfucker. You know I was right it's too when late. I fucking told you. But you want to be too you too busy worried about how you feel about some shit you did to me. Like what kind of shit is that? But with that being said, I have to continue to do it. I can't let the few times that it's you know what I mean didn't go right didn't go right yeah. to. Stop me from becoming a better version of myself because for so long I've always took on the situation myself on some, well, I assume they don't want to be bothered with me no more, so I fall back. A lot of people I don't talk to no more just because I assume, well, I ain't heard from you and you ain't heard from me. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I'm just going to get to that point where I just hit people up, say, hey, are we good? You know, what's going on? Was there something that you I ain't got to You ain't got to wonder no more after that. You know right. what I'm saying? And if and if you reach out to somebody and you ask them straight up, like, yo, what's going on? I hear from you, man. Hey, we good? And they still continue to bullshit, but still treat you the same. At least you know. Then you know, know it was them. Now you know. At I was like, know. you on some bullshit. That ain't me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just be cool with knowing what role. I, I Sometimes I need to know what role I play in a scenario and how that's affecting what's going on so I can know if I'm moving correctly or not. Like, I just want to be informed of people around me if I'm moving right or not, man. Like, 
Let me know Because sometimes you don't even know how you look When you're making certain moves until somebody tell you And then motherfuckers will see you doing some bullshit They fuck with you But when you do some goofy shit They laughing at you when you ain't around Like that shit, mm. is, that shit crazy I want to um, I fl- laugh at niggas all the time though So I get it <laughs> Well, <laughs> but I'll tell you, like I'll I'll laugh at it, but then I'll tell you about it. I won't feel comfortable just laughing at you ten minutes ago if we got a relationship. And then you walk in the door and he's like, "Yo, what y'all laughing at, nigga? We's laughing at them boots you got on, my nigga. <laughs> That's what we was laughing mm-hmm. at." But before we really, really, really start this episode, I want to actually uh, put some respect on New Jersey's name. Um, 70, 74% of our listeners are from the United States. Shout out to France for taking a chunk out of uh, 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 that percentage. Ooh, we, we. we used to be like 98% uh, United States. Now we 74. We've been that way for like half the year. That's Yo, pretty dope. Man. Yo, buy me a plane ticket. Fly me out the front in the Um The leading state is New Jersey with 18%. And the leading city... Is Trenton with thirty five percent? So, with that being said, what I just Shout said was: town. there's no other city in the world that supports your boy more than their hometown, and we appreciate y'all. Shout out to the Shout town. Shout out Give to a round of the Let's town. Do it. The town. The town. The town. The town. The town. So, with that being said, it's December twenty second. It's almost Christmas. Three days. Oh man, let's talk. Look, this this Santa Claus topic. It's one of the good and bad things of social media, man, where everybody gets to have an opinion. And if you know how to present that, if present that opinion, mm-hmm. you know, you just might be on one. But with that being said, man, there was a lot of talk of Santa Claus. And we need to all start telling our kids Santa Claus don't exist for reasons that make sense. And everybody has their reason as to why they want to keep the dream alive. So with that being said, how do we feel about telling our kids about Santa Claus? I'm conflicted, honestly. Because uh, my initial inclination is to go, mm. you don't need to Wait know no shit Wait a minute. About. What did you just say? Come on now. Don't do that. Woo. <laughs> All right. Let me simplify for this guy. My, no, 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 no. Keep going. My like first it. thought. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> my first thought was, based on how I grew up, my mom told me ASAP. I think I was in like the second or third grade. She told me straight up. I let I worked too hard to let some fat white man get the credit. Nigga, I bought them Christmas gifts. Oh, all right, cool. So I asked you then. Mom like, said that? Yeah. She, word for word. Word for word. Dang. I'll never forget it, bro. This must have been before the church days. <laughs> yeah, this is, boy, I'm in third grade. <laughs> okay. This is like yeah, she 91 <laughs> or some shit. Like, nah, this is way before church, Bob. Uh. Um, so I didn't give a shit about Santa. Like, I still cared about Christmas. I ain't give a shit about Santa. Like, I never, I ain't never leave a glass of milk out and some cookies. You know what I'm saying? I never, never, none of that goofy shit. We so, did. You don't remember. I, uh, it wasn't my choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, hey, Jared, come here and cook these cookies for Santa. Okay. Like, I ain't give a shit. But um, I'm conflicted because although I, I don't want to sell my son this facade of Santa because I think it's honestly pointless, but I get the, um, Perspective of some parents wanting their kids to have something believe, to believe in or to be looking forward to something or to teach them to believe in some shit or whatever. But um, I still think kids can have dreams and be ambitious without having to believe in made up characters for, you know, reasons that have nothing to do with the actual holiday. You know what I'm saying? You can celebrate Christmas without talking about Santa Claus. You can celebrate Easter without mentioning a fucking Easter bunny. You know what I'm saying? Like just shit like that. So. Before I get into my side of things, I want to ask a brief question. Are we hating on Santa Claus? Are we jealous of Santa Claus? Meaning that when the kids open those gifts and they say, man, Santa Claus got me this. And you be like, yo, fam, I bought Fuck that shit. Fuck yeah. Santa Claus ain't buy that shit. I bought that shit. I work hard. Bro, I don't let no man take credit for the work that I do. <laughs> bro. It don't matter. Okay. Santa Claus, Ricardo from around the corner, nigga, you. Niggas hating on like, Claus. Like, nah, bro. Like, you, you don't get that respect, my nigga. Like, then you just get pushed to the back. Like, now, nah. Now, I, I don't was... need to be on the front lines all the time, but, bitch, when it's time for me to do what I do as a father or a boyfriend or a brother or son or whatever, like, that recognition go here. Mm. That go ahead. So we have established that Santa Claus is being hated on. Now, when I was five, so you must have been uh, two. That's why you probably don't remember. Three. Oh, oh we, two. Yeah, two. Yeah, you three yeah, years yeah. old. Part. I was five. I remember being five because I remember. No, where. man. Our birthdays is a week apart, nigga. Like, 
I'm three years older than you, fam. I'm 36. You're 33. Oh, yeah, so yeah, if you're I'm right. five, I'm you God damn it. So to get myself extra lame. I remember where I was, and I remember this moment. Uh, we was with Aunt Stephanie and Uncle Barry. I don't, you remember staying with them? In Virginia? No, in uh, Princeton. Nope. Jersey. Okay, so you don't remember staying with them. Unless it was just me. I'm pretty sure mommy just ain't dropped me off. I think she dropped the both of us off. She probably that was, was the thing. No, I was the favorite. No. All right, whatever. All right. <laughs> Let me continue. Let me continue. <laughs> Um, so I remember them baking cookies. That's how I remember it. I remember baking cookies and everything. And I remember bedtime came and I remember I looked out the window and all I could see was stars and I was wondering which one was Santa Claus. And I got to thinking Fucking at that punk. I got, <laughs> <laughs> I got to thinking at that age. I said, now what the like how is this like And another thing that like made me like me I'm sorry, but we ain't, we never had a fucking chimney. How this nigga get in here? That's where I was getting at till you cut me off. Right? It's like bad. I'm it's looking like it. I'm looking at I'm looking up at the sky and all I see is stars. And some stars move quicker than others. Some was airplanes. You, you didn't know what it was. When you five, you got the imagination. Like, yo, that's moving. What's that? An airplane, a rocket ship, anything. Or mm-hmm. well, maybe that's Santa Claus. Make a long story short. It just never made sense to me. Um, about how this guy could travel all across the world and get everybody their gifts, jump down a chimney. I don't remember nobody telling me Santa Claus wasn't real. I just think I got the gist of it. Or it might have been those times mom just brought the gifts in. See, mom never told me that there was no Santa Claus. You just always saw the gifts. Mm. You know, there's sometimes no gifts was wrapped up. You just, the gifts was just there. But with that being said, my son, who's five years old, last week or two weeks ago, Asked me if Santa could get him a gift. Now it was the you sat there for a second. No, you, it was the glare in his eyes to where I'm like, man, you know what? If this, if you like this, I love it. You know what I'm saying? To where if you really believe in Santa Claus and it makes you feel good, I'm okay with that. I don't personally care, and I wouldn't tell him Santa isn't real just to boost myself up or mm-hmm. just to, you know, what I mean, like I didn't want to burst his bubble. If this means that much to you, I'll make sure Santa gets the message that you want this gift. If my son is anything like me, which it seems a lot like he really is, he don't give a fuck about no Santa. He just want what he want when the time comes. I really believe that. I look at my son and stuff that he wants, bro. That boy will laugh. He will start crying over something he wants. And the moment he gets it, he starts laughing. Like, it's crazy. Like, the moment that shit is in his hands, it goes from... <laughs> well, that's, that's fake. Oh yeah, that's like that, yo. Yeah. He, <laughs> when I say crying, I mean, streams though, and extreme screaming and loud. It's like, all right, man, here, <laughs> and I kick him in his ass like you little punk. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I get it though, and also I don't want my kid to be the one kid. In right. class, in class, and everybody's like saying it is. He like, man, that nigga ain't real, <laughs> right? And then that kid take it to school, and that he didn't ruin he go home. For those he, other kids. he ruined it for his siblings. Right. He ruined it for his cousins and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then you got T- Timmy and Tommy go home. Mom, mom, Jay Jason, said there's, there's no, no Santa Claus. Claus. Well, I want to talk to Jason's dad. Now we got <laughs> beef with the whole. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jay, did you did you tell your son who told my son that there's no Santa Claus? Yeah, I told him. Yeah, matter of fact, hey, little Bobby. Santa ain't real, yo. That's your dad in the costume. Now. <laughs> now. Fuck you want. <laughs> so, yeah, that's another reason why I personally... But where does it stop, though? Is Santa it, or are we allowing kids to believe in every single imaginary character that's supposed to be a societal norm? When you're innocent, when you're at a certain age, and I don't know when the age stops, but when you're at a certain age, um, I think you can let them fantasize if it makes them feel great. Like, you know, when they wake up in the morning and they're surprised and they're happy, let them have it. Um, I didn't tell my two oldest about Santa Claus. I don't know who did. I don't know when they told them. That's the thing. Like, I'm real disconnected with that. I probably did, be honest. I just know that they know (laughs) that dad is responsible for the gifts. I don't know who told them, but it is what it is with that. So with that being said, man. Fuck Santa. Yeah. I'm not going to name the episode that, but yeah. Uh, double standards, and I want to talk about that, Sleigh right? Bells, ass nigga. Uh, men have double standards. Double standards. Women have double standards. Double standards. 
I got this conversation based on a topic um, that I was tweeting about, and I don't remember what the topic was, but shout out to Stephanie from the I Say No Podcast. Shout out to Steph. And um, she made a statement saying that um, whatever I tweeted was a double standard that men got away with. And I said, well, what's this double standard you what's wish? What's your tweet? I don't remember what it was about. And she just was like, and I said, well, what's a double standard that you wish you can get away with? And she quoted me a Jay-Z line from uh, Song Cry about how he was a uh, wild upset that Shorty wanted to leave. I was just fucking those girls. I was going to get right Yeah, back. it's kind of like if men did that, well, basically what Jay-Z did, but if women did that, you know, they would get the Jay-Z treatment. But if they we do did do that, that. Well, but basically what I'm saying is if Jay-Z wanted to leave her, or Jay Z cheated on, you know what I mean? It's 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 tricky because Jay Z did step out, came back, and thought she'd still be there. Mm -hmm. But if they step out, yeah, okay. Basically, if women step out, we like, nah, you ain't coming back. <laughs> that type of double standard. I mean, I had uh, I was on a conversation. I think somebody posted something like that in a, um, on our Facebook group, on our Facebook group page, and. It's like, I think they asked fellas, would you take your girl back after she cheated on you? If you found out your girl cheated, would you take her back? And somebody cheating on you like that, it don't make you stop loving them. It might, you might not fuck with them for a minute, but it might still be feelings underneath that hurt. And if you know you got them there, my advice is to not tell nobody that your bitch just cheated on you. If you tell niggas that your bitch cheated on you, you're going to get a whole bunch of bad advice about niggas that don't have the same feelings you do. And you're going to end up making a decision with somebody else's feelings. So I say, don't tell nobody shit. I'm definitely torn between that because I believe in the conversation with the right people. You know, mm -hmm. like you said, if you went out and just told anybody or any one of your male friends, and they you, might be like, yo, leave right. that bitch. And then you get back with them. I mean, this nigga a fucking sucker. You don't get right. back with that bitch after he, she cheated on but you. But if you talk to the right type of guy, he'd be like, so what, so what you going to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Because with that being said, me... I'm not saying that I'm this, you know, I mean, perfect thinker, but I'm a thinker. And if my girl was to have cheated on me, I would honestly be like, okay, what did I do? Mm -hmm. Like, I wasn't paying you the attention. And that's one of the double standards I want to talk about. That's one of the double standards I want to talk about because men have ours and women have theirs. But before we get into it, because I was about to get into it, I want to talk to you about this article that I was reading and it's about 34 men. They discuss double standards that favor women and hurt men. This is not from the podcast, brothers. This is from 34 random men. You want to hear it? Well, here it go. Number one, if women sexually harass us, it's seen as amusing rather than rapey. Facts, but is that something that we created though? Like, uh, if you hear about a teacher having sex with a ten year old, we'd be like, "Shit, where was that teacher at?" Yeah, but that's an ignorant form of thinking. But so, isn't that man made but, though? Is it man made from us? Like, I think we created that one. Um, do we want help from I that don't, though? <laughs> I don't. I don't know though because when you look at it, when you look at it as a from a kid, when you're when you look at yourself as a kid in that scenario, like you, oh shit, like, I, nigga, you ten years old, you know what the fuck you was doing with that yeah. grown ass woman, and then sec, and then I, I now being a dad, I look, I put myself, I put my dad shoes Absolutely. on. I had that would have happened to me, how my mom would feel, you know what I'm saying? Or so, our sons, you know exactly. So fast forward to now, if that shit was to happen to my son, he might be excited about it, but bitch, I'm pissed. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely, I'm, Absolutely. I'm pissed. So number nah. two. If you go anywhere in public with little kids, you're seen as a predator, pedo. I don't know about that one, Pat. I don't know. Wait, say that again? If you're if you go anywhere in public with little kids, you're seen as a predator, pedo. Uh, do you have kids with you? And you shouldn't be in a place yeah. that kids are if you don't have any fucking kids. Like, why would you be at Chuck E. Cheese as a grown man by yourself? Like, yeah, I'm kind of confused. <laughs> are you saying if you bring kids to a situation, you're still looked at as a pedo? Or if you just pop up at Chuck E. Cheese by yourself, you looked up, looked at as a pedo? Because you are. I mean, yeah. <laughs> why are you, you fucking up? Why are you at Chuck E. Cheese alone? Fuck out of here. You're boy. on your own with that one, pal. Fuck Whoever here, you boy. are, Mr. As Random my son would say, crazy boy. <laughs> Uh, if you and a girl both get drunk and have sex, only one can be accused of rape. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's one. Yeah, that's one. Especially if the like, because what are they saying that the woman was unresponsive? What about the man? I you was unresponsive. Like, and she had sex with me. I would okay. never, I would have never done these things or said these things had I not been but drunk you know, out of my mind. You know what happens in the movies though when shit like that happens? There's 
the the guy goes to report it to the police station, and it's always a fat, ugly cop who's like, "Hey, that, that, you should be happy. Yeah, That'd have been me." Yeah. Like, bro, but look at you though. You know I'm saying we we not the same, my nigga. So also, I ain't want this. But also, on a serious note, it kind of goes back to uh, number one, right? To where right. Um, we aren't really affected by that. So if two people are drunk and it's and she didn't give consent in her uh, uh, um, sober mind, that could affect her in the long run. Mm -hmm. If we get sexually, if we get, you know what I mean, raped by not, you know what I mean, fully understanding what was going on, it doesn't really seem to have that effect in the long run. Listen, that's why even when you are having consensual sex with somebody and they, they hitting you with the stop, stop. Like, you want me to stop? I'm, I'm stopping everything, yo. The, well, the R word is not a word I want attached to my name in any type of way. We also I have to rem remember that there are situations where you go to completion and then she wakes up and say, what just happened? Right. So there was never a stop. I never had sex with nobody that drunk, man. I don't know where the fuck y'all be partying at or what kind of woman y'all be dealing with. I've never had sex with a woman who was so drunk out of her mind she was in a completely different mindset the next day and unaware of our arrangements that were made prior to that night. Number four, men are always the dumb ones on TV. Who cares, pal? Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. Niggas do dumb shit. <laughs> Niggas do dumb shit every day, man. Yeah. <laughs> Number five, women don't get blamed for dumping a man when a man dumps a woman. He's afraid of commitment. I like Facts. that one. That's a fact. I like that one. If you're in a relationship and you're saying that this relationship isn't going Why anywhere, you need that good woman. You have, as a man, see, we, this is a double standard that you know works for women, doesn't work for men. If you wake up one morning and decide that this just ain't for you no more, you you don't want this, mm -hmm. you have that green light to say that. But it turns out that if a man does do that, he's weak and he's walking out on the family. Mm -hmm. When a woman does it, according to the woman, when a woman does it, um, it's best for her, and you know she takes the kids, she gets with all them. the support, she takes everything. <laughs> um, you know, what I mean, that's she takes right, the girl. Leave that weak ass nigga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. God damn. Hey, I'm about to break up my girl. Why would, now, why would you leave that perfect girl? And even what oh, the yeah, fuck? Yeah. What you mean? Oh my like, god, that perfect why would girl. You leave, why would you oh, leave man. her? So uh, people don't see what you see, though. No, and they, they don't get will. the person that that. <laughs> yeah, they'll never see that never real will. person behind closed doors. But even if you have a conversation with your homies, right. like fam, like you can't. Why are you leaving? You can't lead a family because homies say shit like that. I ain't never had a homie say no shit like that to me. And I would look at the nigga a little bit different if I did. I'd be like, yo, bro, why are you questioning me about my decisions? Maybe last week you decided to buy that stupid ass whatever and I let you do it. <laughs> you we, let we, me do it. We might need, well, we might need conversations like that. I, I think sometimes be like, man, do what you want to do. I don't think that kind of works. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, do, subscribe do to subscribe to Do whatever that you form. feel. Yeah, don't say that shit, but. Yeah, but I say, do what you feel, but. Be mindful of how you moving and how you feel. You know what I'm saying? And like, I would say be mindful because you don't know my life. You don't know what I go through behind those doors. Right. <laughs> so Yeah, that's definitely a uh, double standard right there. That's definitely a double standard that I'll add to my list. Because once again, we're talking about double standards that we think we. Um, that we would like you know, to be switched. I'm just running off some things from um, the other men. Um, number six, female bisexuality is accepted. Male bisexuals, they are just gay. Well, uh... uh that's true. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there ain't no such thing as a male bisexual, bro. You you all the way on the other team. Sorry. I don't know what they're saying here. Male genital um, moats. I don't know. What the fuck? Fuck that. Let me see. Let me read that shit. You know, Number I, seven. I want the comments a little bit. I don't know what they told You wrote it. I ain't writing it. Oh, shit. I ain't I writing it. Uh, what happened, man? That's why I pressed that back button right oh, there. Oh, crap. Actually. Hold on, people. Did you, did you save it? I got it. I got it. I got to go back to the website. I got to go back to the website. Give me a second. Here we go. We're at number seven. You can read it if you want. I don't think it's that important. Uh, male genital mutilation. Totally legal in every country. <sighs> Once again, <laughs> some of these lists. I just think they just be picking shit out. Genital mutilation. I'm a, I'm only going to now name the ones that mean sense. Some, yeah, makes sense. If a woman gets angry at a man, it's his fault. Mm, I like that one. I don't Say like again? it. If a woman gets angry at a man, it's his fault. Um, if he is the reason she's mad, yeah, it is his fault. But I think what they're saying is she could just be having 
an off day and if she's showing her emotion regardless it's his fault but of course if you're a man and you want to you know i mean get the yelling it's you're a nut you know what i'm saying yeah like let me get my shit off too if if, if that's the case if you want to have one of these moments i should be allowed to get my shit off too uh, I think that's just one of those things. I don't know if I agree with that being a double standard. I just think most niggas know when your girl is in a in a mood, uh, she had a bad day at work or some shit. You kind of just probably want to stay out of the way for a little bit. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm gonna keep going. Women can beat us up all they want, but if they hit back, we're monsters. Now, I think that domestic violence is bad, and it should not be. Um, um, I just wish it went away. Like it, it didn't exist, but. Um, a woman shouldn't be allowed to put her hands on a man and then still run to the cops. Um, especially if the two of them got into it, you know, both everybody's hitting each other. Um, both should get in trouble if that's the case. I'm, Not just the man because I'm he's breaking the man. up. I'm breaking up with a bitch. Absolutely, hands on me like Absolutely. that. I've never. I don't. I don't know how niggas even date women that are aggressive like that. Like, nah, bro. I'm super good. I can understand a push or a, a, a mush in the face and shit like that, but you start smacking and throwing fists, like, you want some shit, shorty. You got to go. Or maybe I got to go. Mm. Somebody got to go. I'm trying to, I'm <laughs> trying to figure out one more that I might... How do you get back with somebody that just punched you in the face? Yesterday? Here it goes. If a man cheats, he's an asshole. If a woman cheats, it's the man's fault. Which is kind of like what I was about to get into um, uh, like 10 minutes ago before I actually got into this list to where if a, my girl cheated on me, I would sit back and be like, yo, let me figure out what I did. Like, was I not paying you enough attention? But then I said to myself, that's not that's still not fair because there's no real reason under the sun why a man could, even if he's unhappy. You know, women will always tell you they don't mean it. Well, you just leave or just come to me. Just talk to me. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and we're not, men aren't that big on, you know, very expressing ourselves with everything, especially if we came to you before and it fell on deaf ears because you didn't really believe we was going to, you know what I mean, jump mm -hmm. out the window with this shit. Like I came to you before. Like you might not have thought it was that serious, but it was serious to me of what I don't like and that you keep doing. Mm -hmm. So I get around another, you know what I mean, female and man, we clicking. It is what it we is. clicking. And, and shit Next happens. Thing you know, we got yeah. chicken. Niggas start licking. <laughs> <laughs> but if you flip it, women are known to, for saying, I stepped out on my relationship because I wasn't feeling appreciated with you. And it seems to be more accepted than anything. Um, so that's like one of the double standards that I'm like, yo. Well, niggas. Let's be just, fair across the board. Listen, I'm a two way street kind of nigga, right? So if my shorty, she don't mean she tell me that. When I do the same thing, guess what the fuck I'm going to say? <laughs> I'm going to say the same shit, and you better accept it the same fucking way I did. So some of these are all the same. It's basically about uh, domestic violence. People don't want to be hit. Um, so if I, I'm a definitely, I think I definitely want to go with the uh, the cheating scandal. Like Let it be fair on all boards. Let it be fair? What you mean? Let cheating be fair? No. No, 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 no. Pick a side. Like, what are we doing? Like, mm. cheating is wrong. Cheating is bad. Oh, you mean all across the board is like what applies for men and applies for women yeah. and vice versa? Oh, okay. So whatever we apply, just make it be fair. Yeah. If 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 stepping out because you're not appreciated, then let that be what it is. Mm -hmm. But don't make it. But don't be on some. Oh man, women do it, or 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 I did it, and they stand on that, and everybody agrees with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like yo, fam. That don't make no sense. Why couldn't you come and talk to me? Because the same thing they'll say to you, you can just hit them back with it. Like, right. okay, I didn't notice that. You, you, same I didn't shit. notice you changed from last week's episode. I didn't notice you changed your wig style. Right. No, I didn't notice you lost 20 pounds. Sorry. Doesn't mean I don't love you. <laughs> hey, yo, if you don't notice your shorty lost 20 pounds, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I just, sums I just, up. I just do. You I, might need to get cheated on so you can recognize oh, 20 man. pounds, but not five. Not seven, but 20? That's a that's another person. She shedded another body. I just threw a number. I I'm just saying. <laughs> if a nigga didn't recognize when Shorty lost 20, but the trainer complimented her every day. See? See? Once again, what season is it? Is she walking around with hoodies? It don't matter. Fam, you not. All right. 
woman got a, a woman that lost twenty pounds has a new level of confidence now. She is completely different. And if you about don't herself. notice it, that gives her ground. No, to cheat, no, 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 to go no, no, show no. Somebody else. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying like you. It's obvious signs of her being happy with her body at this point after losing twenty pounds. Is I'm a I'm a fuck the shit out my girl. <laughs> If I noticed that a 20 pound drop, girl, you better get that ass over here. Other other double standards women wish they had were to piss outside. They seem to love to, like I've seen mad women say they want to piss outside. How many women would fuck the hell out of mad bitches if they was men? All of them. And of that's, course. And that's my thing, too. Like they don't like it. But I've seen some women that said if they had a dick, they'd just be fucking wild bitches. But what's your double standard that you wish was kind of like, you know what, this is wow, y'all bugging. How y'all get away with this? Um, This is murder. I don't know, man. There's so many. That I, I kind of, I'm bothered by all of them. And actually, some of, the, some of the ones that, you know, favor men over women kind of bother me too. Um, I don't have a clear cut one, man. I just want, I just want what applies to one apply to all. Like, you can't get on me for this and be screaming on me and then, I feel some way about the same thing and then you act like it's no big deal. That's what they do. I don't I've, like that I've shit. been in those situations. Like, I've been in a situation where it was completely flipped. Yeah. Right? And you go, hey, fam, what's this? What's happening with I that? know you ain't talking you. Right, right. Fam, right. we not talking about that. We talking about you We right talking now. about this. We addressed that shit already. Now we addressing you and yours. And once you see that, you realize a lot of the arguments that you had in the back in the day don't hold no weight. Like, you just destroyed every argument you ever had because of this situation right, right now. Right. If this is how you're going to act. So don't sit up there in my face with tears in your eyes telling me what I did. Because when it's your turn, you got to take it. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Am I preaching 100%, or am I preaching? A hundred percent. I'm with that if shit. If you were in my grill on some, hey, you did this. I can't believe you did that. You ain't shit. You ain't this in the third. I should have the green light to be able to say the same thing to you. And you got to take that. You cannot then say... Well, what two about what you? Ago, right, you nah, didn't know. Yeah, you should have brought that shit up two fucking months ago. You understand? That's a, that's a fact. You should have brought that shit up two months but ago. But chances are they did, and when they get caught, they'll bring it up again. Listen, when I'm addressing you about what you did to make me mad, I don't want to hear shit about what the fuck I did to make you mad two months ago. All right, mm. that is uh, that shit is null and void at this moment because we're addressing something that you did that's fresh. That shit just happened yesterday or today or last week or whatever. You understand? So no. Hell no. Whatever it is that we got going on, I want you to, I want just even even friendships as well, not just women, but women you're in relationships with, but guys you're in a, a friendship with and women you're in a friendship with. Like, if you did something to me that I did not like or you're moving funny, like, I get the right to tell you that. And I don't think people will listen enough to actually what the person that's telling them um, I don't think they're listening and trying to recognize that character flaw within themselves. Niggas don't like to look in the mirror. So when people tell them that they doing shit that a nigga don't like, a defense mechanism kicks in and now it's now you're a victim. So we're the men and we're usually the ones that do the fucking up, right? So when we get caught out there, it's kind of embarrassing, right? It's kind of mm-hmm. like, damn, I fucked up. Like, shit, all right. Like, all right, I heard you the first time. You ain't got to keep repeating it. Like, right. I know I fucked up. All right, man, damn. So you got to... Kind of understand when women get caught, they get embarrassed too. But they think is like they real emotional, so they going for the juggler. Like, oh my god! Like instead of them being calm and saying, "Yeah, I'm bugging right now," they go for the kill on you as well. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to what you said about thirty minutes ago. They come back next week, like you know what? <laughs> right? You know what? You was right I last about week. What you said. I was bugging. I knew I was right a week and a fucking half ago. And you sitting on that because now yeah. the household has to keep going. Life it's tension, has to keep going. It's tension, it's in, the tension crib in the crib And who's going to ease the tension? Obviously, right. I can't talk to you. I tried that. And when I did, you threw old shit in my face. So I'm not about to have this conversation with you again. Meanwhile, she's on the other side. And she has every right to still be mad because her, she might be moving the way she moving because you moved the way you moved. Mm-hmm. But did we handle it? Right. Already? Did that happen months ago? As of right now, or on this date, you're the one that got caught out there. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about just shit. Right. And um, you got to address your own shit, man. When it's time. Yeah. I want to propose that in 2020, man. If you're listening to, like, well, I know you're listening to this, whoever you're listening to, but <laughs> tell your mate, tell, whatever. I don't know how we're going to get there. But when it's my time, let me get my shit off. Let me get my shit off. 
when it's your turn, get your shit off. I, 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 maybe that'll help relationships. I don't know. But let me tell you something. Speaking from experience, if you don't let me get my shit off, you can temper. <laughs> you can temper. Right you can lose me. Hey, yo. Because if I can't talk to you. My girl was mad at me on Thanksgiving week, right? Thanksgiving week, we was beefing. So I grab mad shit and I go back to mom crib. So as I'm outside, <laughs> she came outside. She like, what you thought this shit was over? She kicked my bags over. <laughs> I was like, yo, man, what the fuck, man? Like, why are you doing all this? But why, like, though? Uh, she was, like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying but why. why she, but you want to know why? Because you Cause, probably Because me walk, just leaving like right. that wasn't you good don't enough. Care? For the, yeah, right, oh, you right. don't care? So I was outside, and we, was, we, had, we had a whole conversation in the crib. So I get my shit. I go outside. She comes outside. She's like, what you thought this shit was open? <laughs> I had my shit stacked up, about to put it in the, in the car. She kicked that shit right <laughs> over. I said, like, come on, man. Like, what, why is you doing all this? She's like, no, no. Because it ain't going to be over that easy. All right, man. So, I don't be knowing what they be like. Hey, yo. Why I am I, so I'm like, in that moment, I'm like, is she going to hit me next? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm kind of positioning myself to, to catch, to, uh, to slip a, a punch if she, if she on that kind of time. And, and you know she didn't It didn't go that far It just Physically it just went as far As her kicking my shit over But I ain't have to Restrain her or nothing like that I, Did you have to change Your approach Because I've learned Like there's like There's a picture floating around With Joe or Joe Button And Sin Santana He's sitting on the drum sitting Indian style yeah. Women don't like Nonchalant shit When they're in their When they're in their and emotions they're yeah. When they're in their fit When they're in their feelings it can trigger a woman who's never put their hands on a man to do to so. Put their hands on a man. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is, when she kicked over your shit, did you then be like, "Let me show a little bit of passion for this relationship"? Um, I or had no, I you? had the same approach. I'm I'm a conversationalist. So, you know what I'm saying I can talk the panties off of none if I actually try. I feel like so panties off of none. Yeah. Oh, if I wanted Ooh. to. Yeah. But anyway. Um, I had to change my approach in the sense of actually articulating myself to the point of understand, so that she understand understood me a hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It wasn't um just saying the first thing that came to mind. It was me actually digesting everything that she was saying to me in the moments of her, of her anger, and being able to digest that myself. And to be able to provide her a response that made her know where I where we stood emotionally at that point and what my intentions were going forward and how to repair, you know what I'm saying, this this mishap. So I did I, I had to take my time a little more. You know what I'm saying? With my words, my tone, my posture, and the way that I just presented what I was saying to her overall. So she knew I was dead serious. So you was different from when you was in the house to outside? No. Um and in her initial moment of anger. I'm not really it's, See it's weird Like I can't get upset If I'm not upset Like if you get upset at me And what you are mad at Is just cause and, Like you have reason to be mad I, I can't get mad at you Now I'm trying to figure out The solution on how I can repair what it was That I did To make you mad at me You know what I'm saying But if you're coming at me With some bullshit Then yeah I can combat that With bullshit Because I don't see Where you're going with this Or where you're getting this what from What do they want from us Like if you're pissed at me and you were all emotional. You expect me to get emotional with you? I don't understand. Right. I'm and, listening to you. Right. And as far as nonchalant goes, well, shit, man, uh, nigga, that's me 24-7. So you, like you can't expect me to not be nonchalant when you get angry. No, I'm I'm not I'm no longer nonchalant when I'm angry. <laughs> You know, yeah. when I'm angry, that nonchalant shit goes straight out the window, bitch. It's going down. Yeah, absolutely. Like, when if, if I'm angry. Right. But, but if you're angry and you're trying to get me on your level, well, first of all, I'm trying to understand what the fuck the situation is. Now, okay, cool. Now, see, all of this is connected. Right. Because if we was to get angry as men, the women team seemed to match our energy. Right. They turn right. up. They turn like, up. what are you right. turning up for? This is my shit. Well, this is my shit. Let and me how, get my shit How off. the fuck? See, I'm all, about, I'm all about solutions, man. I don't really fuck with problems too much. So once you come at me with the problem... I don't want to go back and forth for hours about what the problem is. Okay, this is the issue. This is how the issue arised. How do we fix it? I don't want to keep going back and forth about you did this or I did that and you said this and you was here and you was supposed to be, man, fuck all of that child shit. Like, this is the, what's the overall issue? How do we solve the overall issue to go on and grow in the future? Simple. That's it. See, me, 
you don't have to even respond. Like, I just want to get my shit off. Like, let me see what I got to say. Uh, but it's just for some reason, women like meeting your energy. When you come into the house and you got a real issue and you hot, you mad, they turn up too. That shit only worked for me. Like, if if it was like another grown man, like if another grown man get hot at me, he's screaming on me, and I'm screaming on him. Then who the fuck you talking to? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like, bitch, no, nah, no, nah, nigga, you got something to say to me, you better check that shit and come correct, cause because <laughs> you ain't gonna get the response that you thinking you getting, my nigga. It ain't going down like that. I think we on to something though on how we can better commute. Well, I don't know if we're actually on to something because we're actually asking women in the heat of the moment to think. <laughs> and that's kind of, and that's, and I don't know if they can do that because they, be, it becomes an out of body experience for them. I don't like yeah. that's not them. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure after she kicked over your shit and she calmed down, she's like, "Well, that's not me. Yeah, that's not who I am." You feel what I'm saying? Mm. But they get that luxury, fam. You let us break some shit in the house. Like I'm calling the cops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm calling the cops. You let, you let, then let you her. Throw that, you throw that vase up against the wall. Oh no, he crazy. Let. Let the women storm out the crib with their bags, and we chase after them. You ain't going nowhere, motherfucker. Right. Take the bag out. Take that I'm bag. I'm calling the cops. Right. Neighbors, y'all see this? Like, right, right. It's, it's, we are monsters. She kicked my shit over in front of the neighbors. <laughs> she, I don't give a fuck. And what they probably say, oh, look, he probably done did something. Right, yep. you know what I'm, I'm, he probably I'm done. standing there looking guilty like a kid who, got, who forgot to get fucking picked up from school. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm saying, they're looking goofy and guilty and shit. So they walk up past, they see her going hand with my on my shit. They was, they just put their head down and kept going. Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 hey <laughs> shit. That, uh, we've been there before, haven't we, been? Oh man. That's what they Why? were saying. Walking past because we're usually the ones that started the shit, and the women can actually respond right. any way they see fit. Yeah, you know what I mean? If a woman pulled out a knife on you, she's in the right. If she like, if she wants to whack you with whatever option she can grab, she's in the right. You two, feel what I'm saying? There's two things that I absolutely will not and will not ever tolerate in a relationship in, mis- in moments of anger, other than cheating, of course. But you cannot put your hands on me ever for any reason unless I put my hands on you. And you cannot damage any of my fucking shit. You can't bleach my clothes. You can't cut up my sneakers. You, you can't throw home, a brick through my car. You, you come home and your clothes is on a lawn. On a lawn. Bitch, I'm going to fuck you up. I am going I am going to fuck you up. Straight up. But don't we understand that even in their wildest moments, they are sane enough to want to push your buttons? Listen, after you burn my shit, after you throw my shit in the lawn. I didn't say burn. No, not burn. I, I used the wrong word. But after you toss my shit in the front lawn... And it's been raining and shit, the ground wet, my shit got mud all soiled. Yo, that is a problem. I am going to I am going to react to, to shit like that. I'm hundred percent going to react. Mm. Everything could have been solved or met with a solution. Probably could it might have taken some time to get there, but prior to you damaging my property, we could have reached some type of solution or agreement. But after that, no. And the crazy part about it is your no. girl. Knows what pushes your button, right? Um, and so maybe we have to do a better, better like, job of hiding the shit that you like. Well, you can't do that, <laughs> right? Exactly. They'll, they'll peep it, and if they really go there, it's hard. It'll be hard, even if you know they're doing it intentionally. It'll be hard not to because that is the button. Mm-hmm. That's the motherfucking button, right? Oh, that's it. I'm about to go nuts. Bing. Like they wouldn't do it if they didn't think it bothered you. Mm-hmm. So to each his own. So whatever you're going through, that's an individual thing because I'm um, not saying that you're by yourself with this, but whatever she's poking at, more than likely is what she knows what it gets your attention. So even though when they go nuts and they seem like they're unstable, they're stable enough to know what it is to take you there. And then when you do get there, nah, but see, don't that's be mad bullshit. they call 911. But that's bullshit too because women that do shit like that to provoke a nigga – because they know he's going to get mad. But then when the nigga actually does get mad, they go, oh, I ain't know he's going to get that mad. Yeah. You know, like, what kind of, sh- how the fuck can you presume or guess how angry someone's going to get? It's- there could have been multiple factors that happened to him already in that day that when he, when you did whatever it was that you did to him, it just sent him over the deep end. Now, bitch, he burn, he break his shit, he burn his shit, and he choke you up against the wall. That's some crazy shit. Now, it's the double standard that, they are privileged to because that's just who they are. 
You know what I'm saying? To piggyback off that topic, man, I wanted to ask you a question. Like, how do you handle situations when your girls are hurt monthly? Um, now, uh, it's it's a sad, it's 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 a hard part for women. It is. It's that time of the month where they're going through excruciating pain, um, and they're aggravated. Man, they all right. They all right. And they're aggravated. <laughs> but with that being said, I've seen some guys say, you know what I mean? Know when your girl time of the month is coming. Go out, buy some chocolate. You know what I mean? Like, whatever you know she wants, just make sure she has it. You know, they make it sound easy. To me, though, even after you do all of that, you still have to have a conversation with this woman. And she's, and she's so emotional at that time that the dumbest joke, the simplest gesture or anything can trigger her to verbally abuse the hell out of you. I want to know, how do we handle this? This is a podcast for men. How are y'all handling your woman on her cycle. Um, email us at flaw700 at gmail.com, F L A W 700 at gmail.com, and tell us how you handle being in a household with your girl when she's going nuts. Honestly, bro, I don't do shit different. She tell me the only thing we don't do is have sex. <laughs> but what about other than that? Everything is the same. Like, my girl, she not really one not of those. Not everybody goes nuts on it, yeah. Yeah, they're not. She not really one of those people who is like overly emotional. Emotional during her um her cycle, um she still, uh she still processes thoughts as clear as she does. You know when she's when it's not that time of the month. I don't honestly. I don't really even. I can't tell the difference. Like it's literally the same, except that we might not get it in a day or two mm-hmm. of that week, but. Yeah, not other than that, I don't really. It's nothing that makes me. It's it, like it's not like she come in the house complaining and bitching or something. I'm like, oh god, yeah, it must be that time of the month again. Yeah. You know, it's nah, it's never like that. So, but for some that do, um, I'm pretty sure there's moments where you could just feel like you're or you are a punching bag for this person, and you go, hey man, you don't went to work, you ain't get them no issues. You don't hung around your friends, your girlfriends, you ain't get them no issues. Why do you wait till you get home or, you know, just random conversation with me to want to be mad? Show yourself. No, you've hid yourself from everybody. You know, I just I just want to get out that bag of the person that you love is the one you hurt the most. Right. Or the, or the one that you tear down. Because has to tolerate. Has to tolerate the most. Yeah. Once again, it goes back to what we talked about about 40 minutes ago to where you might be fed up with your girl and everybody else looking on the outside like, fam. Right. You got the perfect situation. You tripping. Right. You don't know my life, fam. And these is niggas, they can say stuff like that. Like, nigga, are you with your ex anymore? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you did you only have one girlfriend your right. whole life? Like, why would a grown man ask me some shit like that? Right. That's not in one lifelong fucking relationship. Nigga, you don't understand the process or how it goes when you break up with somebody? I've had people tell me, right? Like some some of their girls. You know, cycle so bad that they actually don't go around them for those days. Damn, like they they sleep in the basement or something or their their separate room, and it's understandable from the woman as well. I mean, because if it works for them, you know what I'm saying. Like, if you're one of them people who don't tolerate no shit, like if your girl come in the house, she on her cycle, and um, you want to make a joke about the food or something, like yo, if I'm not eating that shit. You feel what I'm saying? It could be anything, like a joke. Like, right. you know what I mean, conversation. You want to be able to have a free conversation, like. If you're in a relationship and you're holding your tongue for everything, you know, that, that can make you miserable. Mm-hmm. So if you're one of them people who are just free talking and just, I speak my mom, but it's in, in a joking sense, but she might not take it as a joke mm-hmm. at this time of the month mm-hmm. and it could lead to a huge blow up. You know what I think, man? I think, honestly, I just wish people overall got better with their communication. Like, if you're a woman and you're one of the women who tends to be a bit more intense during her menstrual cycle and you have a low tolerance for people, you should inform the people closest to you of that so that they know when you come in the house with the long face, they know how to move and to not further agitate you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one of those, it's just a simple heads up. Listen, babe, I got my cycle the other day. You know, everything's irritating the fuck out of me. I just kind of just want to sit here and just be by myself or whatever. Or what about when it's coming but not there? Give me the heads up. Like, yo, fam, I'm about to go through something right now, so don't take nothing personal. And right. You know what I'm saying? And right. I, I think that'll sit better 
Um, I mean, I just think it's a proper way to do everything, to be honest. I think it's a proper way to do everything. Man, that's an ideal situation. Of course, it's not going to be like that every time. Sometimes you might do something to actually piss her off during her cycle, and you might deserve to get cursed the fuck out real quick. But I'm talking about you you being who you are. Me? 24, no, 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 not, not, oh, not generally. You. But you being who you are 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But it's just the fact that her cycle's on. So now the person that you are, it's not registering with her now. You understand what I'm saying? And um, I just think that, you know, the, the the tongue is sharp. And it depends on who you are. It can definitely chop you down. Mm -hmm. And I just would hate for the relationship to really turn bad during that time and, and can never probably re uh, get better based on what you say to me. Yeah, man. It's, well, people got to understand also, like, just because you're mad don't get you a green light to say whatever you want. You can't disrespect me because you're mad, especially if I actually didn't do anything to you. The driving uh, force behind what you're feeling is... Yeah, passage to womanhood. They ain't got shit to do with me. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. When a woman's on her cycle, do she owe you an apology? Or once she gets off, are you just like, all right, I knew you was bugging? It depends on it depends on what happened. Some shit is excusable, some shit is not, depending on how intense it, it is or isn't. I want an I want an apology on the slightest argument because I'm not an arguer. I don't like it. Like, I don't like I arguing. I think we either. can I think they can be avoided just by saying, Oh, you ain't like that joke? My bad. Like don't take it. Personal, but when you give something legs, when you give a situation legs that don't deserve legs, you look at your partner like your fam. It you wasn't tripping? that serious. Like, yeah. you tr are you bugging? Like, mm -hmm. I'm a, I don't want to talk to you at all now because you really just took what I said and you made, made it, it into something, something that is not. I'm that That's type of person. That's definitely a turn off. Yeah. yeah, it's like your fam. Like, tell me you're bad. Like, you like, I know okay. you going through. Right, I know yeah. you going through something right now, and I can't relate. But when you get good. Man. I needed my bag. Yeah. I was bugging. That's right. it. I, I feel you. I feel you on that. I, I, I'm, a I'm on board with that. I ain't got nothing against that. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Especially if you know you tripping. Especially if the woman knows she tripping. A lot of times, women be tripping and don't know it. Other I, times, they be tripping and they know it. And I they don't wouldn't say they don't know it. I just would say they can't control it. They can't stop it. I think it to be like when, I, when you out of body. Like for me, I've been drunk. I've known that I'm, what I'm doing is just I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm, do, I'm doing it. <laughs> Bitch, that, I'm, putting like, the, I'm putting the paper plates in, in the fucking dishwasher. And you laugh at yourself. Right. Like to, right. to me, my drunks might be your high. It's like, yo, fam, <laughs> why am I doing like, it's just some dumb shit? Like I'm actually mm -hmm. I'm moving slow as hell. Woo. I start dancing and shit when I get high. <laughs> but you know that <laughs> she, you, she can be on her period. Right? I'm coming on crib stone. I'm like, hey babe, look what I was watching the car. <laughs> Oh, you happy, huh? And she mad, right? Like, like, like that, nah. that 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 could lead to a fight. And also, man, it's sometimes as a man, you can't well shit like all the time for the most part, you can't allow anybody's other energy to affect what you got going on. So you could be having a great day, shorty coming to crib tight because she got a cycle and she had a bad day at work. You're like, you know what, babe? I'm gonna ask you how your day. I'm gonna go to my big brother crib and watch basketball. I'll be back in an hour or so. Depends on. You know what I'm saying? Depends on. Depends on um, your girl, because man, listen. Let me like, tell you some, something. Some things tell can't. Us. Some things can't depend on a girl. Like yo, you're it. having a bad day. I I'm it. not. I don't want to. That yo. Could you imagine if men had? They say you know how women say men act like big babies when they're sick. Yeah. Can you imagine if men is a lie. had a cycle, right? If niggas had a cycle, how many women would you do you think would actually sit around it and that man be complaining and whining? We're also talking about double standards. There's just some right. things that women can get away That's with that we can't. Right. But, but, what I, but what I was saying was, if she's coming home from work, so technically y'all just spent, I'll say 10 hours apart because you got to get to work and you got to get off of work and you got lunch breaks in between. So you really worked eight and a half hours, depending on how long your commute is. We spent 10 hours apart. You cannot. Leave as soon as she gets in because you see that she's having a bad day because that might trigger something else. I haven't seen you all day. Um, we're in this, we're in a relationship, and one thing that I'm not going to do is like not have you around at all. But once again, that depends on the That's, person. That sounds like a controlling, clingy relationship, and I'm good. I don't clingy? Know. I haven't seen you all day. It's not like I was with you all. I was with you yesterday, though, right? <laughs> what the fuck? And see, the day before that? Now you sound like me. What the fuck? Like, yeah, like that now shit. You sound like that me. shit matters, yo. You ain't. <laughs> I don't go for 10 hours. I ain't see you in 10 hours. Uh, we was together all fucking week. I think you'll be all right for another hour. Like, no, that no, no, I don't okay. get I don't get down with that shit. Okay. You ain't about to you ain't about to cage me in because you're first of all, you're on a completely different wave of energy than I am right now, and you wanna lock me in to be 
on that same wave? No, hell no. If I'm feeling away, if I want to be bothered and you want to dip, I'm not going to stop you. Just have your ass back here at a decent hour. And if you're not, give me a heads up. But I'm not going to try to keep you in the crib because... I'm having a bad day and I want you around. This all circles no. back to what no. we talked Double about on, on the episode that you didn't make it to. Me, me and Mike Nice was talking about uh-huh. how we love it when our girls. I heard, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, we love it. Go when ahead, please. I'm not going to stop you. Right. You can't say that to them. They don't like that. Listen, they man. Want to- <laughs> Listen, I don't. <laughs> they don't. I like don't that. know if I'm just a different type of nigga or if I just have bad manners. <laughs> I don't know. They don't like that. But shit, all man. I know is I cannot. Keep myself in the space, even temporarily, where it's uncomfortably uncomfortable for me, energy wise, and that nature. Listen, I'm gonna give you some time to cool off. You just got off work and you had to deal with how your body feels on top of the stupid, stressful motherfuckers at your job. I get it. Sometimes you need an hour and a half or two after work to kind of digress and then be like, hey, babe, I'm good now. I'm gonna give that shit to you because I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go to the whip, I'm gonna smoke, I'm gonna go on the back porch and smoke. I'm going to go somewhere else, whereas my energy is not affected by yours, and you get to fix your energy while I'm away, and I don't have, we don't have to bump heads or anything like that in, in the mix of that. Like, I'll be honest with you. It sounds great. Of course, it sounds great from us, but I'm just saying women always find a way to hate. Just like we hate on Santa Claus, women hate the fact that we don't get a cycle. Listen, fellas, I'm telling you. sometimes you just got to walk out the door. Babe, I'll be back. All right, and come and come home to that shit. Like, all come home right, to what shit? All right. You ain't do nothing wrong. I haven't seen you all Day. Now I can all day. All right, cool. I'm not tripping off one day. Now if it's going on two, three day march, I ain't see that's a problem for okay. me. But so, if we if we have a lengthy relationship, we've been together for quite a a, a good amount of time, and we have a rapport with another with one another. We live together, we communicate on a daily basis at work, everything, even when we're not together. I don't think it's a problem if I go out and have a drink at the bar before I come home from work. Not every night. But once, twice a week, maybe once a week, I have, I see completely nothing wrong with that. Okay. Don't put no handcuffs on me, man. I'm not on fucking probation. I don't need no ankle monitor. I don't need to be tied up. Okay. Let's get into our fresher fiascos, man, while we at it, man. Let's do it. Mm. Yeah. Multi-millionaire Carl, and I can't pronounce that plant's nice mm-hmm. name, uh, there it is right there. multi men in their car. Ripen? Uh, ripen. It's called Ripen. Seeks 10 people to live with him in his $5.6 billion New Zealand paradise. I read this article and I was trying to get some confirmation. Mm-hmm. Does he just want anybody to come live with him? That's really what I got from it. Like right. He didn't say family members. He didn't say friends. He didn't say white people. He just built Spanish this shit. People. And now he's like, yo, somebody come live with me. Or, or come basically party with me. Right. I don't think this is a living situation. Like I think he this this guy wants to just party like it's 1999. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I'm gonna go fiasco. It just sounds nuts to me. It just sounds like you know what I mean. They say money don't buy happiness. I don't believe in that. I just think that if you're <laughs> fucked up in the head, money won't fix it. Right. But this guy, it's like Michael Jackson building Neverland, Neverland. and then hey, come play with like your fam. Whatever yeah. issue you had, Neverland is not going to fix it. Right. So whatever issue that Carl has, mm. inviting 10 strange people to come live with you and party every day to come in your New Zealand five point. First off, wait a minute. Multi-millionaire. And he's. What's the. Uh, how many wait, 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 wait. It says multi-millionaire Carl, but his spot is 5.6 billion. I think that's wrong. He might be a multi Billionaire, if he has Bob. a five point six billion dollar paradise, or maybe you meant to write million instead of maybe billion? Maybe I meant to write. Nah, but anyways, he's rich, but he still hasn't handled his uh, uh, mental ish- issues. So I'm gonna go fiasco. Uh, I'm going fiasco. Um, people don't give you shit for free, especially room and lodge and party a party oh, at yeah, the fair a and a, and a five point six million dollar uh, mansion in fucking New Zealand. I don't know how niggas in New Zealand get down, but around here, it's red flags with shit like that. You could become a part of a sex cult. Yeah. This motherfuckers getting kidnapped left and right out here these days. Your organs could be on eBay. You might be showing some. I got to fuck all your wives. Yeah, you know, I got to fuck your wives. They might They might not let you leave. You know what I'm saying? They might hold you captive in the basement. I just watched that movie, The Intruder. What glimpses of it? My girl was watching it yesterday. And a nigga was living underneath the house the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was a whole house underneath the house. The nigga knew everything that was happening upstairs. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That sound like some shit like that. I'm not into that, bro. No. I'll book an Airbnb not far from there 
and then come party with you niggas as long as I can go home. Fiasco. All right, fresher fiasco, man. The Breakfast Club will no longer allow six nine on the show. I'm going to go fiasco for the simple fact of him telling on his gang members. Gang gang can't be worse than what he was accused of doing when he was on his show. He he had already went to trial for being in that video with the young girl. Mm-hmm. He was already calling rappers out. You know what I mean? Trying to, you know what I mean? Trying to get him robbed and shot. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all had him on his show. Y'all had him on y'all's show when he y'all was should have, Y'all should have banned him when he did that he shit. He should have never been allowed up there because of how much of a, a nut he is. We mm-hmm. all seen what he was about. But y'all had him up there. Now you want to ban him for what? For what? I don't understand. Yeah, I'm going to go fiasco too. I mean, he ain't snitch on none of y'all. Right, he ain't snitch <laughs> on you. Know he snitch. And also, um, to be honest with you, as much as I hate to admit it, Whatever journalist or program gets that interview, that shit is going to pop. The first time he does an interview after he comes home, that first interview, that shit is going to do streaming numbers. Absolutely. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big controversial interview. You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand. I don't understand a fucking radio show going on record saying we're banning people. Like, you get radio shows are what they are because of the content that people bring, you know what I'm saying, to the show and, and assist in making it listenable. So this nigga, as much as I hate everything that he been doing ever since we he's become a household name, unfortunately when he touched when he touched his feet on um, on solid ground as a civilian again, who whatever media outlet gets that interview, it's probably gonna have one of the biggest interviews of twenty twenty or twenty twenty one. And Charlemagne, DJ Envy and um Angela Lee, they ain't you know what I mean? Gangsters. They don't represent the streets, so I don't right. understand why they would not have him on. Not saying that I would listen. Nothing not- he does is affecting what they do. Right. Right. And I, 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 I'm not saying that they're fishing for views, but I'm pretty sure it'd be the only most thing I could think that might make ever. him. Only thing I could think that might make him not want to do it is that maybe they got ties with some of the niggas that he was snitching on, or maybe some of the execs that they do business with was like pre- putting the pressure on them. Like, yo, y'all can't have this nigga. Y'all got clowns like this on your platform. Only, I ain't coming up the here. The only rapper that I Jay-Z? know of, no, 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 the only rapper no. that I know of that is what was a part of that was Jim Jones. Now, if if Jim Jones means that much to you, then I guess, you know what I'm saying? Because that's I like- I think it's deeper than that, though. Yeah, but you said ties to whoever- Yeah, but if they got ties with Jim Jones, Jim Jones got ties with Rock Nation, who knows how high that ladder of disturbance goes? You know what I'm saying? With just who don't want this nigga on the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, still a fiasco, man. Yeah. He should have never, never been on in the first place. Right. Fresh a fiasco, D-Way uses, pro, D-Way uses she, the she pronoun referring to his 11-year-old son. Fresh a fiasco. I'm going to go fresh. I saw this interview. It was a dope interview. Like, I clicked on the interview before this even broke. Like, it was, it, it got uploaded four hours ago when I peeped it. Mm-hmm. And it was a dope interview. So, when I heard, I actually heard what he said. You know, his son is 11 years old now. But when his son was very young, him and his wife saw that his son was, you know, moving different. And he had to, he basically has been learning and digesting what's been happening with his son longer than we've seen pictures of his son. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So at that so with that being said, I think that it's easier for a man, a father, that when your kid is very young and they're at that innocent age, and you can look at your kid and be like, regardless of what you decide to be, I'm going to love you unconditionally. Mm-hmm. And that's where he got it from. Now, I'm not saying that it would have been the same if his son, I can't think of his name. I think they both start with a Z. I think Zaire, Zaire. Played, Zaire played ball or is that the yeah, other one? Yeah, that's Zaire played ball with uh, LeBron's son. So I don't know the younger one. I don't know the younger one's name. Now, that's not saying if his son was like 18 and just popped out was like, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now. I don't know if D-Wade would have... No, I'm saying like, I'm not saying that he wouldn't have been as acceptive, but I think right. there could have been more jokes. There could have been like, you sure, son? Like, whatever, right. whatever. But when your kid is like three... Two, three, four. There's not much room for jokes there when it comes right. to the you, development you characters. Look, you step back and you like, okay, right. I see that you're gravitating towards the doll babies and not right. Because that's a crucial time in that child's development right. and figuring out who they are. So if you react wrong, then you you risk your relationship with your kid. And if you're like, if you love your kid, yeah. if you love your kid, you can look back before he even make that announcement and be like, son, I already know. Right. I've had women 
like with their daughters. Mm-hmm. Like I've had women, I know women personally who their daughters came out and said, "Mom, this is what I want to do." And the moms be like, "Yeah, I know." Because yeah, as know. parents, we know. We tell, so right. it might be a shock to the world what um, the family of D Wade, you know, looks like. But as a father, as a loving father, he knew. And whatever you want to do, son, we rolling. And you know I me, mean? that's how it is. We're going to support you. So I'm going to go fresh. Um, I'm going to go fiasco. I super respect it. hundred percent. I have nothing against D Wade or the sexuality of any of his children. Um, I put myself in his shoes and I just think that I would still respect my son's wishes, but I'm him referring to her as she made me a little uncomfortable. I ain't gonna lie. It made me a little uncomfortable. Um, I would still address my son as my son, but still respect his lifestyle at the same time. Um, just as a father, I just, well, maybe it's easier for him because he got two sons. So he could be like, you yeah, I can still refer to son as son and let um, the young one do uh, what, what they choose to do. Uh, me speaking as a father, one son, I just, you know, that saying that means something to me, my son. You know, I, I take mm-hmm. pride in, in saying those two words in a sentence. And I would still address him as such, but still respect his lifestyle. So I would just have to put it to him in a way it was like, yeah, I respect how you choose to live your life, and that's fine. I'll support you. I encourage you. But, you know, for for me to be uncomfortable with this, and you have to respect how I react to how you choose to live your life, but I'm still going to treat you and speak to you like my son well, let for me the ask, most well, part. Let me ask you this, because when now that you mentioned it and he said she, with the money that D-Wade has, I can see that this young man going into transition and going into transition later on in the future. Like Magic Johnson's son. I don't think Magic Johnson has surgery. I just think he just is, you know I me. Mean, Magic Johnson's on like 6'10". Gay as hell. Yo, that shit is crispy. Yo, he big as, it's, it's just weird seeing a big ass gay dude like that. Like, he's huge, bro. Mm. Same height as Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm pretty sure that his son... Might be going, you know what I mean, transitioning if if he mm-hmm. because I'm pretty sure he had that son with his talk talk with his son, like, yo, right. I wanna be referred to as this. Like the way you just say make that up, they right. have conversations. So right, 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 right. I wanna be, you know what I mean, whatever, whatever is this. And I think that if that's what he wants, he's definitely going to, you know what I mean, make go under the knife and basically transition. Right. And at the yeah, end of the day, I'm cool with that, but it is what it is. If 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 I have to be comfortable with the way that you want to live your life, you have to be comfortable with the way I choose to accept or handle the way you're currently living your life. Right. We got to stop with the, uh, I'm just automatically supposed to be Right. Okay I'm supposed to be okay with, with you. any decision nah, you make. Nah. That's with anything. Like, right. yo, if you're my kid, I'm going to have my opinion on anything you do. I don't care if you're 35. Right. But, but, but because it's the gay thing, we're automatically like supposed to, to like, just go, okay, it's okay, fine, fine nah, cool. Nah. I'm telling you that I know for a well, I don't know for a fact, but the way he told his story, it took D Wade. I'm not saying it took him years to process it, but it he's been dealing with it. it. But he's yeah. been dealing with this yeah. behind closed. Like he knew before the pictures hit social media right. of what my kid. That's why I wasn't a big deal when yeah, the pictures hit the social media. Like, yeah, I, I knew that already. It's not a big deal to the family, and right. he got Gabby in the house. Gabby picked up the vibes. Right, like yo, I think our son is. You know what I'm saying, like right. yo, this is what he want to do. So at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, because I see it on social media, I hear it all over the place. You. To me, you do not have to be a thousand percent on board with what anybody want to do, especially like what if he stayed straight, right? And he got a girlfriend. I don't have to be okay with your girlfriend. Right. I don't have to be okay with you getting married. Right. I don't have to be okay with you wanting to move out the state. I don't have to be okay with you wanting to travel to another country. As a parent, you do not have to be a thousand percent. I'm going to support you. Right. I'm also tell you what I think I about it. Truly. Right. Yeah. right. I think the greatest thing, the best thing you can do with your kids is be honest about how you view them and how you assist them in guiding them in their life. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, important, it's important to encourage and support, but it's also important to be transparent with your kid and not just saying, that's like being in a relationship with somebody. You're just saying yes it's because they asked you. The whole time, you fucking miserable. You know what I'm saying? Right. Guess what? You're miserable because you think you're supposed to go with, go with it. anything your partner say. Right. It was fam. Like you it's it's okay. Right. So I hope that But it's all it's all gotta be respect on both ends. Like if you come to me with this, okay. I respect that you came to me with it. Now you have to respect the way that I choose to address it. Mm-hmm. Simple. Fresher fiasco. The NBA is discussing a tournament prize of one million dollars per fiasco. Player. Fiasco. <laughs> Finish reading it though But that shit is dumb NBA is discussing A tourney 
A tournament prize, $1 million per player for for 30 teams in an in-season tournament and 1.5 for the coaches, allegedly. Because I don't know if that's like per coach. Like every coach gets 1.5. Right. I, I didn't do my Googles on that last part. But basically, an in-season tournament. I'm going to go fresh because we all see the excitement of the – I think they're trying to capture that college tournament excitement because, let's face it, one and done is always going to be better than the best of seven. That's why when you watch the NBA playoffs, game seven is normally the highest rating game of that series because mm -hmm. it's that one and done. Mm -hmm. um, game one and game seven is always rated higher than game three because game three doesn't mean shit. It's, you game, what I'm it's game three. We still got to play tomorrow. We still got to play tomorrow. <laughs> right. But we really excited about game seven? Or, or you up 3-0 and it's game four, you might close them out. It's stuff right. like that. So I get the excitement that a tournament can bring, especially one and done. And this gives the opportunity for teams who aren't. Because I didn't think all 30 teams would be in. Mm -hmm. Like have a tournament for the bottom tier so they could play for something. Right. Like, yo. It's like, it's like the NCAA tournament and the NIT tournament. You know what I'm saying? You get the national championship, but then the motherfuckers who are the team's that weren't good enough to make the uh, NCAA tournament, they play in the NIT tournament, and then they get the NIT fucking championship. What happens is the team that wins the tournament wins the championship. You're not doing nothing. It's like, okay, the the Golden State Warriors, which are trash this year, and I love it. Yes. Make yeah. it so that they have opportunity to win something. But if you just put the Warriors in a tournament with the Lakers going against the Lakers, they're going to get smashed. Right. What's the point? I honestly don't – I really don't feel like teams that are losing – I don't feel like they deserve a chance to win unless they put their franchise in a position to do so. It's been this way for years, my nigga. But like, they're including this tournament for a reason. Like, let's give to me. And then I, they're dropping why, it from 82 games to 78. Four games, my nigga. Four fucking games. But that's why I don't agree with 30 teams. Put the bottom 16 in. Like, keep it even. But keep the bottom 16 in the teams that's not going to make the playoffs. Give them something else to play for. And then your top 16... That's 32 teams. So if the top 16, because it's 8 and 8, right? It's 8 and 8. So your top 16. 16 yeah. So then yeah. you would have uh, 12 or whatever. My yeah. math ain't that great. How many teams is it in the league total? 30. It says 30, 30 teams. All right. So half 16. That's 14. So 14 teams get to play in this bottom tournament for a million dollars a piece, which probably would be worse because if you make more in the playoffs, though. Because every mm -hmm. game you get like a few hundred thousand, I think. If you make it all the way to the end, you've made over a million dollars. Right. But I'm going to go fresh because it might bring some type of excitement to the NBA because what have they been saying? The NBA doesn't start till Christmas. So what we playing? Two, three months worth of basketball for nothing? Like a lot of times people don't really get excited till either Christmas games or after the All-Star break. Basketball needs something for November or these, uh, before Christmas. So I'm going to go fresh. Mm, I'll go fiasco. I don't like it. I don't like nothing about it. I don't like, mm. no, I don't like anything about it. Okay. Um, I don't give a fuck about no tournament. I just want to know who won the championship, man. And that's another thing. Like, let's not take nothing away from the ultimate prize. Right. Like, y'all just find them. This sounds like a way to satisfy losers. No. To me, it sounds like a way to put seats in these arenas that's not really. Like, it's 82 games. If you know your team is trash, why are you going? But if we get an in-season tournament that you could actually compete in. You might go. If it ain't the championship, you st who gives a fuck? After that, you still got to play the championship. <laughs> We're champions. <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you winning? You're the champions of the regular season tournament. Woo! That's corny as fuck. I don't care about that. I don't even watch college basketball. Like I enjoy the tournament. But you do know the tournament. But I catch the highlights. Yeah, I know that the college tournament is a big deal. Absolutely. But I also believe part of that is because those kids are so hungry to make it to the next level that they ball out so that the world can see them. These niggas already made it to the biggest stage as far as professional basketball goes. But they ain't going to play no I'm harder than that. They're already getting paid. I'm pretty sure there's a team that you don't watch, and there's a dope... Like, Memphis Grizzlies, I heard, got a stud. My man that almost dunked on Kevin Love. John Morant. Stud. I watched a couple games of his. He rookie of the year, hands you, down. No, he ain't. Yes, he is. No, he ain't. Uh, Hero? I'm not about to get into it. No, Kendrick Nunn, nigga. He, well, that nigga ain't all right, whatever. But anyways... um. There's other people who haven't seen him play. Why? Because Memphis is trash. Now, put him in attorney. He gone. You feel what I'm saying? He gone where? Whatever. Shoe deal. People see him. What's my call? My man from Atlanta. Uh, what's Trae his name? Young. Trey Young is nice, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? They got five wins, six wins. Because the team is garbage. But guess who nice, though? Who? 
Trey Young. That's the, that, that's if what I'm you saying. put them in the tournament, they're going to be the same garbage ass team with just Trey Young dropping forty two and ten on TV. That's what I'm saying on TV. But they're still going to get blew the fuck out. They against other bad teams. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying Atlanta has to play the Milwaukee Bucks for the in, in tournament right. championship. Mm-hmm. But if you put Milwaukee against New, I mean, if you put Atlanta, Atlanta against, against, New York, against Denver or New York. I, 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 on TV I, I, and Trey Young drops fifty on TV. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch okay. Atlanta or New York. I don't give a fuck what the circumstances is, unless these niggas is in a position to take over the league or some shit. I don't want. I just don't want to watch them. Watch them bums play suck, yo. They might get a good game Man. out of it, but you can't. It's not guaranteed There's to be a good diamonds game. Diamonds in the rough. It's what I'm saying. Bro, now the next diamonds is, in the rough. Yes, but I'm not about to watch a whole Atlanta Hawks game or tournament for fucking Trey Young. I'm not. It's not enough. Okay. It's not <laughs> enough. <laughs> he's okay. nice, yes, and I do like watching him play. But in the moments when he's not in the game, <laughs> come on, man! Like it's nothing to watch. That's Carter interest, man, bro. This nigga is eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, man. There are teams that are just trash, like the the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's nothing. No, the about Cavaliers, the all. the uh, the Warriors. But shout out if you like basketball. There's still some people out there who aren't superstar, like, I don't want to say thirsty, because we're actually getting into that stage where we root for a player, not a team. But if you just like the game, this, I tournament, like the game. this tournament will work for you. I like I the game. I can't tell. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the regular season. I watch those games when they come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'm fine with the, with the setup and the format that has been forever. You like, got the fuck is you doing? Yeah, man. Can I please be blessed with the smooth sounds of JJ Icefish, please? You heard? Fuck you yes, Fuck you Fuck you you little bitch ass nigga. Fuck you Fuck you Podcast Brothers episode one city five. Fuck is you doing? It's presented to you by your boy Fresco and is dedicated to some of the men on Twitter. Now, I don't know these men, quote unquote, but I'm just going to categorize them based on a particular topic that's been raving that the ladies has been loving a lot. So I, this might play into the double standard topic that we've been talking about the entire show. So I don't know if you guys know or not, but apparently... There were some new nude pictures of up and coming star rapper The Baby that leaked online. Right now, we all know as if you if you frequent Twitter, you know that when a topic takes hold, that shit takes hold. People get to talking. A lot of women like The Baby. This we we've known this for a while. A lot of women like The Baby. So apparently, the nigga got the nigga dick pics got leaked. Right? Women online eating it up, going crazy. Oh my God, let me see. Apparently, there's a bunch of motherfuckers on Twitter who are upset that the women were enjoying the baby's nude pic so much. Now, fellas, I give you the fact that when things like this happen, these women can be a tad bit annoying by how far they run with it and stuff like that. You know, I, I get it. It can be a little bit annoying. But at the same time, you should not even think. Of speaking on this situation or getting involved with the back and forth with a woman in this regard, you make yourself look like a lot less of a man when you do that. First of all, I don't give a fuck about no other nigga dropping dick pics anywhere. Shit ain't none of my business and it does not affect me as a man and how I feel confident in my ability and my God given talent. You understand what I'm saying? So, if you're a man and you're going back and forth on Twitter or even making comments about women enjoying this man's photo, quote unquote, online, you already in the wrong, bro. That shouldn't even be a realm that that shouldn't even be a conversation that you argue or go back and forth with a woman about. Let them have it. It's ass and titties all day on my Twitter timeline. And, I'm, there, and I'm pretty sure they don't like it either. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't like I'm going around and asking them their opinion about it. You know what I'm saying? You just got to let them have it, man. If you're a man and you want that type of attention, well, nigga, drop your dick pic on the timeline. You know what I'm saying? Get get your just cause. Now, you risking yourself by putting yourself out there because you don't know what the reaction going to be. Exactly. You could be confident. 
but that confidence might not translate over into the results that you're looking to get. Or they might. I don't know. But what I do know is grown men cannot be upset at how other women react to a level of attractiveness to another man. You look insecure, you look weak, and you look like you lack confidence when you do so. So, for you niggas out here arguing with women over liking a dick pic, which you've sent to plenty of women in your time and was looking for the exact same reaction that they're giving to the baby, that's what you wanted. You're just not getting it now, and you're kind of jealous that another man is getting the attention that you want for some of the honeys that you follow on social media. For you niggas and y'all fucked up man's pride and morale, we would love to know here at the podcast, brothers, what the fuck is you doing? No, sir. Can't do it. Let them have it. Let them enjoy it. Should it be over in two, three days, whatever. Shit, go back to normal. Social media is making it hard for people to stand for something. You know, like we're all bundled up in one category. Mm -hmm. So... You got your men, like, you just made that comment, like, about guys doing that. Mm -hmm. I didn't see none of that. Like, I heard about his pick leaking, but right. I just wasn't in the loop as to guys actually doing that. So that's news to me, what you just said. Mm -hmm. But what that being said is, those guys now represent us all. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And even the women who's thirsty for it. Because when I'm looking on it, I hear, oh, the men is mad today. Right. You know what what are you talking like, about? Damn, I'm not mad at all. And then for the women, it's just like, not all women are searching for the baby's pick. Right. But those women that are thirsty for it now represent all women. So we like, y'all women tripping. Because if we if we dropped our dick pick, y'all be like, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you try to stand for something, there's somebody who looked just like you come behind you and do something different. And now you're like... I thought man wasn't like that. Fam, right. I don't know him. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know who that right. was. I hate those questions where they be like, You asking me, well, why did he do? But I don't yo, know why that nigga did that shit. I hate I have those no questions idea. where they be like, yo, why do men do. Fam, right. who you, do you know? You do, I don't know. You do know we all different niggas, yeah, right? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, they be like, yo, would you take your girl? Like, fam, like, not saying that question, but it's right. just they always lead with men. And I get it, man. Maybe we've. Beat it over the beat it over the head for so long that now that they got social media, the women they finally get a way to strike back. That don't mean I gotta enjoy it. Like yo, talk to or speak on who did you wrong, mm -hmm. but stop saying men. All I know is when I get in the sack and I handle my business, it ain't not one complaint. So <laughs> I don't give a fuck. A nigga can drop they dick big on the timeline for all I care, and a bitch can rave about it. That shit will not move me. An ounce That nigga. just goes to show you Like if you just a regular Joe And you drop your dick pic You a pervert But if you The baby A celebrity you when I saw, I, Apparently Based on what I was I was hearing about it Somebody else did it It wasn't him that did it Somebody it's else always, it's, it's always Somebody else leaked the shit Damn that's the thing man that's, You know it's, that's Listen Listen I don't care If he did it himself or not <laughs> he did it But himself, you niggas just can't be mad at it If women enjoy it you That's can't, simple as you that You can't paint me Paint me a scenario Where Somebody got a hold of his shit. Was like, yo, I'm about to ruin his career or whatever. I it's, mean, I could, but somebody else could have taken. He, he could have. He could have been fucking a bitch and take a picture of his shit when they sleep. Some shit. Who I knows? just think he's too young in the game, too fresh for that to affect him. As you see, it had a great impact. You feel what I'm saying? No shit like that. It won't affect him at all. It if 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 it's what women like, then it should boost his his shit. If anything, it will boost his career. But you know. It's um, all good So with that being said man, We gotta get back in our shit And what I mean by that is Man we started a segment Where we dropped gems At the end of the episode We definitely gotta get back to that And there's this one gem That I got um, A quote from Curtis 50 Cent Jackson Man mm -hmm. and I love this quote Right here man He says And I quote Your opinion of yourself Becomes your reality If you have all these doubts Then no one will believe you And everything will go wrong If you think the opposite The opposite will happen it's that simple. And I quote 50 Cent. That I got a quote this powerful. week. That is Shout powerful. out to 50, man. That's Drop them gems. What's your gem of the week? I got a quote, man. And this comes from none other than the notorious Sean Puffy P. Diddy Combs. And it's short and sweet. Can't stop. Won't stop. Take that. Hey. We're going into the year 2020. We might got one more episode in this. Oh, shit. That's, over. A good, that's a good point. Let me see. We You're got, going into one more episode um, before we jump into 2020. Oh, yeah. We got one more next week, man. Mm -hmm. uh, we're definitely going to make some changes, man. We're going into our actually fourth calendar year podcast. 
and dumb. It's time to turn up a little bit. And what I mean by that is, man, we want to definitely, um, we're going to talk about the content, about what we want to do. It's time to start making some bread. It's time to start reaching out to some um, investors. It's time to start um, um, just doing some things, man. You you just don't want to just sit up and do podcasting for, you look up and it's like 10 years and you niggas still sitting in Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You I'm don't want to do that. In a couple months. You don't want to do that. So with that being said, Starbucks man, don't ever put us on a uh, Starbucks page either. I'm going a, I'm to a talk to somebody about that. We was doing shit in Starbucks before they was doing the karaoke Saturday nights. Oh, that shit. They ain't post us on their Instagram one time. I got a problem with that. You good? It's done. Okay. It's done. This was episode 165. Peace 165. Out. Fuck with your boys.